Welcome to Babel's Park, an autobiographical dystopia of a brainless cyber whore. You're listening to Chapter 9, Outcast from Society. Hi David, I am Olga and responsible for the casting of the Instant Karma contestants. Great you are dead on time. I hardly understand you, can you please repeat that? Мне очень жаль. Саури. I am Olga and responsible for the casting of the Instant Karma contestants. Great you are dead on time. Olga smiled dubiously. Thank you. She looked at the flat screen on her desk. The whole room made a bright, friendly impression, even though it had no window. David looked at her in amazement and asked. What am I actually doing here? We will speak a little. So I get to know you a bit, then I will write a short evaluation for the management and we finish. How do you know I will join this? Well, you are here. Что за придурок? I am just a visitor, like many others who are driven by the offers. Sorry, but can't your language module switch to English without a Russian accent? Sure. I imitate the voice of my Nigerian partner for you. Now let's see if we can't coax a little more activity out of you. Are you relaxed? More or less. David lied. If you want, you can lie down for a bit. Olga pointed to the leather couch next to her. Thank you, but I am sitting quite comfortably. Another lie. Wonderful, do you care for something to drink? I wouldn't mind a cappuccino. With pleasure. She typed something on her keyboard. Do you love your wife? Now, where did you get that idea? David began to feel uneasy. Yes or no? It's not that simple. When was the last time you had sex with each other? That's hardly any of your business. Shit, David thought. When David? This is important. Probably a few years ago. You know she's ill. Well, she's not doing so well right now. David tried to play things down. He always did that because he preferred to avoid unpleasant truths. David, face the truth, she's going to die. He thought for a moment. And my love is supposed to save her? Why not? She is not interested, she does not love me anymore. Why would you want to be with a woman who no longer loves you? Because I still love her. There you go. David slid back and forth uncomfortably in his chair. The door opened and a brunette sister of Baby Lawn brought the cappuccino. Thank you, baby. Olga said as she disappeared and smiled at David. As soon as the door was closed, Olga took a flask out of her desk drawer. Do you want? No thanks, I'm still a little hungover. Olga alcoholized her cappuccino and put the flask next to it. Okay, so you love your wife, then why are you having affairs? Do you mean a few hours ago? I was like in a trance. I know, but that's not what I mean. But I told you that we haven't had sex in years. She has lost her sex drive. I see, but this is how you perceive it. It's not my perception, it's fact. A fact. David, could you please consider for a moment that your infidelity hurt Annette so much that she remained confused at first and only later, in the face of her illness, sought refuge in promiscuity. She started it. David took a sip of his cappuccino. She started it. Are we in kindergarten here? I don't remember exactly when, but she had emotionally withdrawn from me. What would you have done if you had been confronted with this diagnosis and had not received emotional support from your partner? She didn't tell me that at the time. Would you have listened? Look, it wasn't like that. You're trying to make me feel bad, but the reality is that she withdrew long before she was diagnosed. Nevertheless, she is now terminally ill. But if she loved me, she would have understood my desire to have sex with her. David, I'm sorry, but you're acting like a petulant child. If you loved her, you would understand why she doesn't want to sleep with you anymore. David finished his coffee and said. This probably confirms once again all the prejudices people have against men like me. What do you think those prejudices are? Shit. Irritated, David put down his cup. 
you think I'm a total loser. No, on the contrary, you think you're a loser. Now I drink. Why not? Thank you. In a stressful situation, why do you hold on to your already cluttered broom closet where you keep your emotional bulky waste instead of disposing of it once and for all? I don't know. Do you realize why Annette came here? I think she wanted to meet her twin brother after years. That's not all. She is suicidal because she doesn't want to expose herself to the pain that will inevitably occur. Jack wants to help her with the possibilities of genetic engineering and digitalization. Is Jack that smart? I can't judge, but I know he experimented with himself. It's still a dangerous endeavor that you should protect her from. And how am I supposed to do that? She's going to die anyway. Besides, she doesn't like old people, so it's appropriate for her to die young. She's not 27 anymore, but if you die young, you have a chance to become immortal. At least in the media. That would fit with her hysteria. David, you are a cynic and hide your true feelings. Olga opened the flask and refilled their cups. Maybe, but most people die in car accidents before they become idols. Cheers. Cheers. Now, calm down, David. Wouldn't it be a real goal if you could save her from this experiment? Maybe that way you would gain a few more years together and rediscover your love. She could become a zombie because of this. Provided she survives at all. And what do you suggest I do? She won't even talk to me. Your negative beliefs are not helpful. At least try to overcome your resistance. There is more at stake than your ego. So again, what do you suggest? First of all, you should formulate your attempt positively. Otherwise, your subconscious mind will work against you, and that is not very helpful. This is not easy. Try it anyway. There is no more time to lose because Annette is already at Jack's beauty farm, to which you have no access. Only as a contestant on the Instant Karma show will you have a chance to contact her. Give it your best shot, David. It won't just electrify the audience. So it's all just a game? But a damn serious one. On a personal level, life is not a zero-sum game. Go save your wife so that her ticket for life remains valid for a few more years. David nodded thoughtfully as the printer spit out a closely written page. Your consent. Please sign it. Some kind of informed consent? He could barely decipher the tiny writing. In a way, you have to give your consent. Basically optimistic, but with a full bladder, David signed. Okay, you will hear from us. Good luck. Thank you. Какой неудачник. David made his way to the restroom while Olga typed, hardly predictable due to emotional instability. Suppressed longing for harmony. Resilience, 7 out of 10. She pressed a button and her brief assessment was sent off. You listen to the ninth chapter of Babel's Park. In the next episode, The Whore of Babylon, Annette encounters self-promoting pilgrims and agitators in the open-air area. Listen to the ad-free version on Apple Podcasts now. To learn more about Babel's Park, visit Dr. Kalasana's website fuckup.coach. And to let us know what you think of this series, we look forward to your review on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you.